Good morning, Midway. Stand and sing with us. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love. Welcome to Midway United Methodist Church. My name is Amanda Lane. I am one of the pastors here. We want to say a special welcome and uh, happy Father's Day for all of you who are fathers, um, grandfathers, fathers, those who nurture others. Um, We are really glad that you are here this morning. Uh, Let me open us in a quick prayer. Holy God, we come together to worship. We come as a people who would like to think that we love you with all of our hearts and souls and with all our might, but there are many other things in our lives that clamor for our attention, and therefore we often relegate you to Sunday mornings and times when we need you to rescue us. Many of us really do want to be, want you to be the one in whom we live and move and have our being. God, we really do want to hear your voice above all other voices in our lives. We get bogged down in the daily routine. God, we forget who we are. We forget who you are. We forget who the church is called to be. So here we are, coming before you today with our imperfections, our short attention spans, asking that you would make yourself known to us. Help us this day to recognize the presence of the holy in this space and in our world. Lord, continue to challenge us, inspire us, and make us into the people you want us to be. Amen. In 
my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence In my trouble, see, oh, you are peace in my trouble, see. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I won't follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me.
My name is Jason Zemkin. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. And whether you are worshiping in person or online this morning, we are excited for the opportunity to be gathered together with you. If this is your first time with us today, we're really glad you're here. Please take a moment to fill out one of the blue guest cards that you can find in the seat back in front of you. You can return these cards by placing it in the offering plate a little bit later in the service or by handing it to one of our pastors. And after the worship service, please be sure to stop by the black table outside of the sanctuary to receive a welcome. And while you're listening to these announcements, be sure to use the camera app on your phone to scan this QR code. It will take you to our What's Happening page where you can find more opportunities to get involved at Midway. Please register your attendance at that same link or you can simply use the tear out in today's bulletin. Alpharetta Mission Project or AMP, it's a student-led, adult-supported mission camp for students. And we will spend time together the week of July 9th to the 14th serving our community and growing together in faith. Now we're less than one month away from kicking off AMP and we still need student participants and adult volunteers. To join in on this exciting opportunity, go to midwayumc.org forward slash AMP. On that page, you'll find all the information and a link to sign up to participate. Now we never want these activities to be cost prohibitive, so please contact Nate for information about scholarships. We also want to remind you of an opportunity on June 22nd to help with some landscape work at Wellspring Living in Duluth. This workday will be from 9 a.m. to noon and volunteers should plan to meet at the church by 8.30 a.m. The contact for this volunteer opportunity is Jeff Fairhorse. So reach out to him to sign up or you can simply contact the church office and we can help get you signed up. Throughout the month of June, we've been collecting canned goods and other food items to help support Meals by Grace. And thanks to all who have already brought in these much-needed items. You can go to our What's Happening page to download a list of items that are still needed. You can place these food donations in the bins that are located in either our Welcome Center or our gathering area. Let's continue now in worship. I'd like to now invite our children to come forward for the children's sermon with Miss Tiffany. just going to wing it and just no mic. Good morning, friends. How are you guys this morning? 
Good. Well, today our children's sermon is going to be about a mystery person. So I have some helpers that are going to stand up. My helpers, if you are going to be a helper, come over here and stand up. Line up right over there. Oh, uh-huh. You can go and help. Uh, Harper, do you want to go over there and line up and you can help? We need six helpers. You... You're a big girl. Okay. They're going to line up. And so each of my friends, you're going to get a letter. You're going to keep it towards you because this is a surprise. And I'm going to give you guys some clues about each letter to help you figure out who we're talking about today. Okay. Jesus. All right. You guys tell me when you're ready. <laughs> Jesus. You know, all, every day, all day. All right, my friends that have the letter, when I say your letter, you're going to turn it around, okay? But not until then. Keep it closed. It's a surprise. All right, are we ready? All right, give me an F. F is for forgiving even when we disobey or do something wrong. This person is always willing to forgive us. Give me an A. A is for attentive. If you need someone to talk to, this person is always willing to listen to you. Give me a T. T is for teacher. This person teaches us the most important lessons in life, what's, uh, the, what is right from wrong, and shows us an example of how to love one another. All right, give me an H. H is for helpful. This person helps us to make important decisions that we face every day. He may offer advice or he may just be a good listener, but he's always there to help us. Do you guys, don't say, don't say it yet. Do you think you know who we're talking about? The mystery person? Jesus and the sheep. Okay, Jesus and the sheep. We did talk about Jesus and the sheep this morning. All right, our next letter is E. E is for energetic. No matter how tired this person is, they still want to play with you and spend time with you. And our last letter, are you ready for it, is R. R. <laughs> Great job, guys. All right, keep your, keep your letters showing. So R is for ready. This person is always ready to love us and always ready to do what we need. So who is that person that we just spelled out? Father. Say it louder. Father. Father. Now. Most of us have a father here on earth who does all of those things I just talked about. But all of us have a father where that does all these things. Rosie, where do we have a father? In heaven, that our father in heaven, God, he does all of those things for us, right? So we are blessed. Many of us are blessed to have a father here and we all are blessed to have a father in heaven. All right, can you guys bow your heads and we'll say a prayer today? And thank God for our fathers. I'll say it, and then you say it, okay? Dear God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for our fathers. And we thank you for our Heavenly Father. Help us to show them appreciation today. And to shine our light for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can go line up at the back door to go downstairs for Children's Church. Well, this morning I wanted to take just a, a brief moment as we prepare for our offering today to, to, to share something. Um, but, but before we do that, let me just say, um, you can engage with this church in mission and ministry uh, throughout this, this time, this time of offering. You can do it by bringing an offering with you to church. You can put it in an offering plate. You can uh, mail it in to the church office if you prefer to do it that way. Or if you love to... Uh, engage electronically, you want to go online, recurring giving, all those good things, you can visit our website, midwayumc.org, and it's there. If you go to the very top, you'll see the little giving kind of tab. You can click on that. That allows you an opportunity to engage uh, in the life of this church. 
um, with your financial resources to engage in the mission and ministry that God is calling this specific church to right here in this area. So the moment of privilege that I wanted to take this morning was there were about 13, I think if I counted the number correctly, of delegates from this specific church, members of this church, that were at annual conference uh, this past week. So all day Thursday, uh, all day Friday, uh, late into the evening on both those days, and uh, part of Saturday, attending to the business of the church through our specific annual conference. And as I was uh, just marveling at the fact we, we had an opportunity to take a photo and we tried to post that on our social media. Um, but as I was looking at the, the group of folks that were here, it, it got me thinking about just the vows that we take as uh, those that are uh, affirming or wanting to be a part of membership within United Methodist Church. That we willingly commit our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And so these individuals certainly... Um, went above and beyond for the larger church this past week serving, but it got me thinking about just how within the local church, how thankful I am for folks that are uh, willing to live into those vows and to live out those vows of your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for continuing to help engage in the mission and ministry that God is calling this church to right here in this corner of Forsyth County in Alpharetta. Would you join me this morning as our ushers prepare to come uh, and collect it? Would you join me this morning as we go to God in a word of prayer? Lord God, thank you for the many ways that we have to join with you in mission and ministry in and through the life of this local church. Father, thank you for the invitation. The invitation to labor alongside one another, to be co-laborers with one another and with you as we do all that we can to build up your church right here at Midway UMC. And as we do all we can to continue to share the good news of the gospel, make disciples of Jesus Christ, and engage the community that you have called us to engage with the good news of the gospel. So Lord, you continue to bless the gifts that we give. Will you use them to build up your kingdom, Lord, and will you continue to bless the giver? We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to engage with you in this way, in this place, and in this time. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. How deep the Father's love for Father 
Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty Father, we come before you this morning. And God, we are so thankful that we are free to worship you, to honor you, to celebrate your holy name. But God, like, like I said earlier, sometimes we relegate you to Sundays. We turn and we do our own thing throughout the week. God, I pray that you would work in each of our hearts. Help us to love you with all that we have on all the days, all the time that we have. God, I pray this morning and thank you for allowing us to participate in the work that you do in this church and throughout the community. Thank you for your love and grace. And God, what a blessing it is that we get to participate with you. And now, God, we lift up names that are on our hearts, names of family members, names of friends, of neighbors, of coworkers. God, we pray for these people and whatever they're going through. Almighty God, we pray that you would be with them whatever road they are traveling down. And God, may your presence be known. May your presence be known throughout the hills and the valleys. God, we lift this and many other prayers up. And God, we now join together and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, Midway, once again. It is good to be with you. If I do not know you or have not had a chance to meet you, my name is Jason Zimkin. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and I'm excited for these next seven weeks to spend some time with you, uh, taking a look at this new series that we've started entitled The Living Faith. So uh, if you were here uh, over the past several weeks uh, in the month of April and May, we had this series uh, entitled Witnesses of the Resurrection. Uh, and so now we're kind of taking what that means for us to be a witness of the resurrection that we have in and through Jesus Christ. And what does it look like for us as followers of Jesus now to live out our faith in this world in a very real, practical, tangible way. And so today we're going to be looking at a living faith and I'm going to be speaking specifically to obeys or to obeys. 
obedience, right? And how our obedience to God is not just a, a kind of a one-time activity, right? I mean, think about it this way. Um, if my parents, when I was younger, asked me to clean up my room, which didn't happen very often, I was always kind of ahead of them with that task. But if they had said, Jason, clean your room, that's a one-time task. Check, done, I'm good. Tomorrow it can be back to being a mess. No, what my parents were really asking me was to clean up your room and then keep your room clean. Continue on, right? This kind of series of practices to keep my room clean. Same with God, right? God doesn't call us to be obedient. One time, do this. Great, done, check, you're finished. No, the obedience that we have to God is a series of ongoing practices, decisions, actions that we take. As followers of Jesus. So I want to share a little story with you about uh, obedience. Um, and I was a very obedient child. Never once ever except for one time in my life that I can remember being disobedient. Haha, <laughs> right, if you believe that. Um, but I was probably about seven or eight years old. My grandparents... Uh, had a, uh, a small little cabin, lake house, whatever you want to call it, uh, in Michigan, um, a little bit north of where I live. So for those of you that have ever uh, lived in Michigan, you know that one of the luxuries of being a Michigander is that you can just hold up your hand like this, and here is the state of Michigan. So I grew up down here. My parents' cabin was, or grandparents' cabin was somewhere in the middle of my palm. As a young child, I'm sure it was just several hours away, but it felt like it was days and weeks and months away to get to their place. But it was a great place because my, um, my mom's side of the family, uh, it was her, um, her parents, my grandparents that owned it, um, her brothers and sisters, everybody lived close, so we would all always go to their uh, little cabin. And I'm not a big fisherman. Um, I don't think I have the patience to be one, right? Because you've got to sit there for a really long time. But my grandfather and father loved to go out and fish. And uh, they wanted to take me out one day when we were at the cabin. So my grandfather and father were over uh, just uh, on the shore a little bit away from the dock, you know, getting the, the, the fishing rods prepared and getting the tackle box prepared and making sure that they had the worms, right? They were real worms, not the little fake ones that they use today. And I'm standing on the dock while they're, you know, kind of back up where that piano is doing their thing. And I'm standing on the dock next to this little motorboat that my grandfather had. And I thought that it would be fun if I would just kind of do like this and hop from the boat to the dock. And I kept doing that several times, back and forth and back and forth. My father finally said, Jason, please stop. You're going to hurt yourself. And being the good child that I was, I kept doing that, continuing that activity. And, and, and again, I mean, I'm not much of a fisherman or a boater, but I know that you got to kind of tie a boat up to a dock, but they're not like super tight in this. So the boat kept kind of pulling away from the dock to the point that when I went to go put my right foot down on the edge of the boat, it was much farther away from me than I could get to, and I ended up in the water. And it wasn't very deep, maybe knee, waist deep, I don't know. I was a young boy. Uh, but my parents told me that I turned around, I looked at my father and my grandfather, and I said this, well, what do you think about that? <laughs> he knew. He knew what was about to happen. He knew where this was probably going to go, and thinking back on it, I'm just thankful that all I did was end up in the water. I probably could have gone and done a face plant on the edge of the boat or something worse. But as a parent of a child, right, and I think about all that my parents had to do to raise me, and then me now being a parent and having this opportunity to try and pour wisdom into your child, right? That parents are called to be a guide for their child, right? That parents are there to try to set up their child to be successful in life. And when Kay and I were first married and together we had this plan. This plan was we were going to be married for five years, no kids. And then after five years we would begin a family together. Um, but if, you know, you have in-laws and things like that and your own parents you know that when you're a young family like that the intensity begins to ratchet upward like when are you going to have children we made it to four 
instead of five years. But I felt pretty good about that. Um, but I can remember the day that, and I was excited when Hannah was born. I remember the day that we brought her home, and we were leaving Northside Hospital. And I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, what are we supposed to do now? We had this built-in group of individuals that would say, do this, do that, change her, do that, you know. And it's like I got home, and I thought, now what am I supposed to do? I don't know. I know what it means to be a parent. But I think that parents are there to be a guide, right? We're supposed to set our kids up for success in life. We're supposed to watch out for them. We're supposed to offer them advice, anything that we can do, like I said, for them to be a success in life, but for them to become the best version of who God has called and created them to be. Not necessarily who I think my child should be, but how God has called, created my child to be. And so I think that as parents, this is just my personal opinion, but I think we need to be there for our children emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And I think God has offered himself to us in the exact same way in the person of Jesus Christ. And that Jesus has modeled for us what it means to be a disciple who loves God, who loves people. Right, and is focused on what it means to live out that great commission of making disciples. But this faith that I'm talking about, this living active faith that I'm talking about, is not just for us alone. I believe that this faith that we have is meant to be generational, right? It's something that we pass on. And I know I'll be talking a lot about children today, and the text that we have speaks to children today. But if I remember correctly... I think we're all a child of God. So whether you have children or not, my suspicion is that you've probably, on Father's Day, fathered somebody else's child in some way. If you've served at VBS this past week, you had a chance to parent about 200 kids. Or if you're going to be serving on AMP later this summer, you'll have an opportunity, right, to, to be able to parent someone, to father someone, to mother someone, to pour into someone. Because our faith is meant to be passed on, right, not just to be held close, passed on to our children, passed on to our grandchildren, passed on to a neighbor or a friend or a spouse or a co-worker. Our faith in God is meant to be generational, not just personal. So I'm going to read to you this morning from Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 9. And I'm reading to you this morning from the NRSV, and verse 1 begins this way. Now this is the commandment, the statues and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you... And your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you hear O Israel the Lord is our God the Lord alone you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart recite them to your children talk about them when you are at home and when you are away and when you lie down and when you rise Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. And write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so that first verse begins, right, that this is the commandment. The statues and ordinances that the Lord God charged me to teach you. Right, so these were the commands, the rules, the instructions 
that were given by God to Moses to pass along. Right, to pass along to the Israelites, Scripture tells us, as they were preparing themselves to enter into, to occupy the promised land that God had given to them. But these commands were not just for Moses alone. God didn't pull Moses aside and say, okay, Moses, so here's the commands that I have just for you. And then I'm going to go through and, and hit everybody one at a time and make sure, no, God told Moses, these are the commands for you and for everyone. So teach. Pass them on. Notice we got this beginning of this generational understanding that starts in verse 2. So that you and your children and your children's children... May fear the Lord your God all the days of your life. Keep all his decrees and commands that I am commanding you so your days may be long. Right? Moses had these commands for all the Israelites. Not just the moms. Not just the dads. Not just the adults. Everyone. And so that word fear, and maybe you have heard this before or know this already, but that word fear in the Hebrew, same as in the Greek, means reverence. That you might have reverence for God and for his commands. That word fear can also mean worship. That you might have reverent worship for the Lord God. That our lives, their lives, our lives should be lived out in reverent worship to God. Not just on Sunday mornings between the hours of 11 and 12. Or when you're in Sunday school. Right? But every day of our life. I had a a professor when I was at Asbury Theological Seminary. Uh, There was a group of individuals that said, hey, uh, before he retires, you need to take uh, two classes uh, with Dr. Stamps. Uh, And he was already probably in his mid to late 80s by the time I had gotten to Asbury and had the chance to uh, have these classes with him. And they said, it's sacramental theology, so you want to take that with him, and then you want to take worship with Dr. Stamps. And I was fortunate enough that um, by the time I got to that part of my seminary career or journey, I'd had the opportunity to have those classes with him. And then shortly after I had my classes with him, he had retired. So I was blessed that I had this opportunity. But Dr. Stamps, in his worship class, would talk about this very same concept, right? That everything is about worshiping God. And he believed that that's what we were created for, was simply to worship God. And he would share that in his um, office at the seminary, he had this plaque made that he put on his desk. And it read this, make your desk your altar make your desk your altar this reminder for him that even though he was a a former pastor and and he had retired from kind of that parish teaching and pastoring and he was now a professor and he was training up the next generation of pastors that it wasn't just something simple and academic that he was doing but was an opportunity for him to be in worship For everything that he did, every decision that he made all of his life was about worship. And I believe that that is what we are seeing here in this portion of the text, right? That we live our lives out in obedience to God as an act of worship. Something that we should do daily. And if you look at the structure of this sentence as it is written in the Hebrew, from the writer's perspective, it is a series of actions or habits, right? That's kind of the implicit understanding of this, that there are these actions or habits, if you will, that are ongoing, that are never ending, that are always unfolding in terms of what it means for us to obediently worship our God. And so living in obedience means that we practice reverence to God in all areas of our life, right? Make your desk your altar. Make your car your altar. Make your home your altar. Or wherever it is that you live out your life. 
in verse 3. Hear this, O Israel, and observe these commands diligently, right? Observe these commands diligently that you were given. That word also means obey these commands, right? Um, keep these commands. But another understanding of this word is to protect. Protect these commands that you have been given, right? You hold them close. You hold them dear. And I think that as we live in obedience to God and his will and his way for us, that we protect ourselves from the trap of the world around us, right? Kind of falling into that worldly living that I think we all probably experience on a daily basis. Those things that pull at us, pull at us and pull at us. We find ourselves slowly drifting from our faith, right? That if we stay diligent to protect these commands that God has given us, that we read throughout Scripture, right? that we stay on the right course. And then we get down to verse 4, which is also begins part of what is known as the Shema. And you've probably heard that term before, but that word Shema in the Hebrew just simply means to hear. And that's how verse 4 begins, right? Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Right, this reminder that God is alone in rule in this world, right? That there are no other gods. God doesn't need any other gods in the area coming on in and helping him rule, right? God is there in rule alone. And having this understanding... For Israel would have brought them a sense of security. You see, they lived in that time in the ancient Near East in what was known as a very polytheistic world. People worshipped many gods. Probably not much different than it is today, now that I stop and think about it for just a second. And these gods, uh, the understanding in the ancient areas, these gods were all kind of independent of one another, working independently of one another, didn't work in harmony with one another. And in fact, the people that worshipped those gods weren't really sure if those gods were there to look out for them or not. It was a guessing game. Maybe, maybe not. And again, when I was at Asbury, one of my very first semesters, uh, Old Testament theology, I wrote a paper on the sacrificial system of the Israelites and what that looked like and what it meant for them and how they were called to live into that sacrificial system different than the way it was within that ancient Near East. And I remember in some of my studies uh, writing that paper that the other societies, these ancient Near Eastern societies that had these gods, they worshipped these gods that were up on these mountains, right? And, and they could come to the foot of the mountain. They weren't to go up to their god. Their god would not come down to them. And they were to offer their offerings at the foot of this mountain and then just hope and pray that whatever they brought is exactly what that god wanted. It was, as Amanda said last week, probably a little bit of chaos. They didn't know. They weren't too sure. But yet verse 5 reminds us about this God that we follow and worship and that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might. This very holistic, this very intimate way that we live into loving God. Right, that we love God with all that we are as we think about it from our heart, right? You ever said that to someone? I love you with all my heart. It's different from bless their heart, okay? That's a little bit different. I love you with all my heart. There's a parent in this room. I am sure at some point in your life you had said that to your child. I love you with all my heart, right? I am my innermost self. But that heart word there can also kind of understanding that that is conscience that in our heart we understand right from wrong again because we are obedient to God and his commands so we love God with our heart we love God with our soul right the part of us that thinks that feels the soul of ours that desires to be with God to follow God to love God to serve God and then we do it with all of our might or strength is another word that you have probably heard 
and how we try to love God with all the power that we can muster on our own. And so I think about what it means to live out in obedience to God, right? That we are called to offer our whole selves to God in obedience to him, right? All that we are, all that we have. And this goes on in verse 6 to say, to keep these words I'm commanding you today, notice that again, in your heart. Right? Keep these words that they're being commanded in your heart. Right? In other words, meditate. Meditate on these commands from God. Meditate on the word of God. For me, meditation is not some odd practice. For me, it is a daily decision. To meditate on God's word. I might even call it personal worship. Many, many years ago, I had gotten involved in a discipleship group back when I was pastoring over at Mount Pisgah. Had about seven or eight other men that I would meet with on a weekly basis. And we asked each other every time we met, how is it going with you in terms of your personal worship? One of the exercises that we had was we had a little form that we would fill out and we would just make notes about what we had studied over the course of that week. How we felt God was speaking to us, what we gained from what we were reading. And no judgment, if you didn't do it, you didn't do it. But it was nice to have a little bit of that accountability and it created a habit in me that prior to that time in my life, I really didn't have. Sunday morning was about the best that I did. And I didn't like to journal either. And now I find myself journaling all the time. Because you just never know what you're going to hear from God as you kind of go through spending this time in personal worship. And I found, in speaking of this um, unfolding that I was talking about earlier. I had found over the course of my time in this. that Initially I would start maybe just by... You know, you didn't do the old random kind of, I'm going to start here kind of a thing. I I would take scripture and go through the Bible, which was great. And then I went through a period of time where I would get this daily devotional and an email that came to me. And then over the last several years, I had found these apps um, through some friends, uh, Lectio 365 and Pray As You Go. And they're these wonderful guided Times of prayer, but scripture reflection for me to do each and every day. In fact, the Lectio app, if you're so inclined to go search for that at some point later today, they've got a morning devotional and an evening devotional. And they're 10, 12, 13 minutes. And recently, Kay and I have gotten into the evening devotional side of it. Now, in all transparency, I will say that usually by the time we started, it's been a long day, and the light goes out, and Kay turns it on, and I begin to hear these words start coming out of someone's mouth, and my head hits the pillow, and then you know where that goes, right? But I hope that somewhere in the recesses of my brain, I am hearing these wonderful words coming, but it's time and personal worship, right? How do we spend time every day Meditating on God's command. Keeping them as the psalmist says, as we see here in our heart. Because as we do, they will continue to lead us. They will continue to guide us. And so I think part of living in obedience to God requires daily meditation on our part. And so then we had the beginnings of this generational impact in verse 2, right? You, your children, your children's children. And then we get to verse 7, kind of summing that up, right? And then again, this says, and I'll read 7 through 9. Recite them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home. Talk about them when you're at way. Talk about them when you lie down. Talk about them when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. In other words, we're called to teach. Always, all time. We live them out. When Kay and I had joined in uh, membership at Mount Pisgah years ago, we were kind of wrangled in pretty quickly into children's ministry. Um, Hannah would have been third grade. And they had these small groups there. Uh, The way they had done it was Kay first and second 
small groups with their leaders, third, fourth, and fifth small groups with their leaders. And it was, uh, the intent was that you did not lead your own child in a small group. That some other adult was pouring into that child. And they were very specifically created from a discipling standpoint. Right, that you got to spend time with them in worship and in study for that hour that you had together. And when we had started there, there was a lady by the name of Dion Perdue who was the uh, children's ministry director. And speaking of this essence of this verse about reciting them to your children, she would always say whenever she had a group of parents like this in the room, she'd remind them, the church is plan A, mom and dad. I'm sorry, you're plan A, mom and dad. The church is plan B. It's your job as a parent to provide that child with that foundation, right, of their faith. And the church comes behind you to undergird and support and to help. But as parents, that is our job, right, to raise up our children in the faith. And she was very, very diligent about this. Because I think our obedience to God in terms of how we live out our life as we're talking now about children... That lifestyle that we lead helps impart in our children how they should live their life. Better caught than taught. Anybody heard that phrase before? Right? You you try to teach your child, but I think it's good for us to show. If prayer is important to you and prayer you want to be important to your child, are you modeling what that looks like for them? If being in worship on Sunday morning is important to you and important to your child, are you making sure that you show up to be there on Sunday morning? All right, if giving is important to you, are you modeling for them what that looks like, right? It's better caught than taught. We can tell them all day long, but they're watching how we live in. And dare I say, it's not even, I think, just our children. I think it's the world that's looking at us as well. Are you really living out this faith that you say you profess and believe in? But what I love about verse 7, it's pretty simplistic, right? There's not some five-part plan or or some video that you got to sit down and watch or some classes that you got to go through. No, it's recite them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home. Talk about them when you're away. Talk about them as you get ready to lie down and as your children rise up in the morning, right? That we are always in teaching mode, right? Not formal teaching mode, but this informal teaching mode, right? We're teaching all along the way. How can we use every moment that we have, not just with our children, but with all of God's children, co-workers, neighbors, friends? How do we teach all along the way by what we say and what we do? And so living in obedience to God while personal Right? We all have this personal aspect of our faith. It is not private. Right? We're meant to live it out, to share it with others. And so that's the encouragement I'd have for you today that perhaps is even the challenge that I have for you today is how can you live out your faith today, tomorrow, next week, next month with those around you? And I forgot to say this at the 8.30 service, but then I remembered as we came in, Amanda had gotten those cards. I see them over there on the wooden table. I see some out back, those little scripture cards. Maybe those are some of those scriptures that you want to take with you to meditate on. Maybe that's those scripture cards you want to take to give away to someone today as you actively live out your faith in obedience to God. Will you join me this morning as we go to God in a word of prayer? Lord God, thank you for the many ways that you love us and call us, uh, Father, to live out our lives as witnesses for you, to live out our lives actively and practically as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ. And thank you for the ways that we have each and every day to live out our faith in a generational way. We're called to share this faith that we have with others. 
do that as we live it out um, in word, but we do it as we live it out in deed as well. Father, will you continue to strengthen us individually, personally? Father, will you continue to strengthen us as a church? That we would live out here in this place, inside and even outside of these four walls, what it means to be followers and disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. So continue to anoint us, empower us, encourage us, strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit to live our faith out actively for others, that others might come to know the salvation that comes in and through your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. your soul with all your mind with all your strength to love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength to love the lord your god with all your with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Da 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 Oh yeah. Well, I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Well, I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Well, I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Da 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 Oh yeah Da 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 Oh yeah With all my heart With all my soul With all my mind With all my strength Well I will love you Lord my heart with all my soul with all my mind with all my strength I will love you Lord with all my heart with all my soul with all my mind with all my strength all right well done one last thing before we go today if there is anybody that's here today that is new this is your first Sunday with us Maybe you're looking around this room and thinking, these are a bunch of happy people. I would love to make this my church home. Man, and I would love an opportunity to talk with you. So please come and talk with us. If you've got questions or we can help you in any way, we want to go ahead and be there for you. So I'm going to give you this as a blessing as we go. This is from Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. I'm going to tweak it just slightly. Hear, O Midway. <laughs> The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. So go forth this day loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Go in peace. You just serve our risen Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. One, two. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all 
with your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Da 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 da.